Hi there, OP here and welcome to the first build along on this channel. Today we will be building a library using 1.14 features. So enjoy! Press start. So the first thing to start with would probably be to build an actual library. And I'm going to be using to be doing this using those blocks here and probably some more blocks which I'm going to find later when I'm actually building this. By the way, I found out, or like, I read on Reddit that you can use those looms <coughs> to create, like, fake empty bookshelves, which look really quite nice, so I think that's that's a good thing to... that's a nice detail to implement, but, um, yeah. Design-wise, the back walls will look a little something like this. It's also going to be a second floor, which we're probably going to do using maybe different blocks or like this part right there but um yeah this is the look of the back wall we have those bookshelves here three tall and then slabs then you go one in and one other one another block in then you have the actual wall and then here you have pillars with which are like four blocks apart and then when you have those bookshelves, they are two blocks away from those ones here. And so with this in mind, we should be able to create a nice looking library without any redstone features for now, because this is what we're going to be adding in a little bit. So for now, the library looks like this. It's far from being done, but for now what we have is three of those kind of bookshelves here like this, with, which are six blocks wide, three blocks tall. And obviously they also have those slabs. Here's kind of a reading zone right there. I do not really know what we could do here, but there's definitely something that can be done. And obviously you've got this back wall thingy, which apparently I have miscalculated. Yeah, might be. Okay, so this is the library I was able to come up with. It's not too large, but it's still not too small. We are definitely going to have a lot of room for redstone. I haven't put anything rest related in here quite yet, except for this tiny engineering table, which what I want to do is reject those bookshelves down, which may be more or less possible. This library, by the way, will be available to download down in the description below, so they can just follow the tutorial along and actually do all the redstoning. But if you really want to, you can create your own library and apply those tricks or those contraptions to your own build. And the very first thing we're going to add is a few lecterns here and there. And why, you might ask? Well, that's because those lecterns will actually control a secret entrance. If you flip the books in those lecterns to a certain page, so for example, 3, 5, 7, and 8, a secret entrance will open, like, for example, here. Or oh, let's say here, this is a good spot for a secret entrance. It's not going to be anything fancy, just going to be a standard jab door. So to do that, you want to put four pistons here, four pistons here, then two pistons there, two pistons there, your bookshelf is here. And then you want to add blocks like this with torches like that and torches like that. And then, whoopsie blocks here. Then you also need a line of redstone running along this block right there. And then also redstone torches down on the bottom here. You will then also need to connect this up in some way, shape or form. So we're going to do this by putting a redstone torch here. You then want to run a repeaters into those redstone torches there. Or you know what? Let's return redstone into those torches here. Then run redstone into this torch right there. We're also going to need a slab right here. There we go. Connect this up like that, connect those guys with repeater set to two ticks 
to the same redstone line right here. And also the exact same thing on this side. Are we just going to do a single redstone torch like that? And that's going to work in the exact same way. So now if we just update those guys, which they're already updated, turns out. If we just pop in here, we can see the bookshelves are all retracted, or like the bookshelves are all flat with the wall. And now they are going to get retracted once we put a lever here and press it. So now, as you'll be able to tell, the bookshelves have retracted and you can walk through. So this is basically our secret entrance, but now we need a way to actually trigger this entrance, which is going to be done using those lecterns right there. First thing you need to do is fill up this book with pages. I'm going to go for nine pages because in this way I will be able to compare it with item frames set the correct position quite easily. So we need the same book, or like not the same book, but basically you need a book in every single one of those lecterns. And then we will need to compare the output of every single one of those lecterns. If they are all correct, then that means that the door should open. And now we are going to do the lectern comparing thing. So to do that, you have to, whoopsie there, hello, didn't expect you there. Yeah, we probably need to move this lectern out of the way and put it, for example, here. Why not? Well, actually, it turns out we do need those 15 pages because of the way um, item frames work. So I'm just going to fill it in with 15 pages. Then I'm going to put the book with 15 pages in here. Then I'm going to put a comparator at the back. Another comparator right about here. And then an item frame on a block right there. This is where you set what page you want to you want the door to open at. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight different possibilities. And obviously 15 pages, however only 8 of them can actually be made to work. So let's say page number 3 works. You want another piece of redstone right here, a comparator right there. You then want another one of those guys right here. You want to set the exact same thing as what you have here as of 3. Then you want to, if I can remember this correctly, do a little bit of this, and now this should be your output. So if we flip this to page 3, the some touch will be on. When it's past page 3, it will obviously be off. And you want to replicate the exact same setup for all the lecterns. Obviously with some variations here, since you don't want the page to always be 3. Click them set to 4 or page 8. When you go here now and put it to page 8, it will obviously work. If you actually want all the 15 pages to work, what you need to do here is instead of having those item frames, you just want a lectern with the same book in it and then set the page to, for example, 6. If 6 is a page you want to you want the door to open at. So now if we go here and set the page to 6, the rest and torch will light up. If we go to page 15, it won't be lit up. If we now set both of those lecterns to page 15, it will in fact light up. So let's set those guys to 13 and then let's go to the other lecterns.
Okay, once you have all of your lecterns set up, which for me it's five, you will actually need to connect all of them. So, you don't really need the storage up here, you can for example have it there. I'm going to do the same thing for those guys right there. What you need to do is actually not have this storage here at all. What you have to do is have your repeater right here, there and also here. Why? Because torch will be at the very end of this entire thing. And then, believe it or not, this is actually your output for all of those lecterns combined. So, if we now just connect this up to our DAW, so now we are actually able to check if everything works. So, let's set all of those lecterns to the correct page. For this one, 6. This one is 4. This one there should be 13. Then this one here is going to be 8, no, 14 actually. Which, this is not the correct book. This is not going to work. It actually has to be a book with 15 pages. So now let's go here. The door is still closed. Set this to page 8. And there we go, our door kind of opened up, but it actually kind of failed. Why is that? Well, this here, as you can see, the signal didn't quite reach where it had to reach, so we're just going to extend this line right there, over to here, and then there. And now it works perfectly. Now, on the other side of the door, you could have anything at all, but since I'm not too creative, I'm just going to get some chests and put them down here. Now let's also get like a lamp, like lantern, there we go. Put it for example here. Beautiful. And inside we can put whatever, like bread. Perfect! The best treasure ever. Like, you you definitely don't need anything else. Bread is the perfect treasure for you to, for you to be able to find. All right, the next thing we could do is, for example, have a swappable crafting table in this area or maybe, for example, somewhere here on the top floor. And those guys here are the only crafting created blocks which can be moved. So camera table, loom, cartography table, fletching table, smithing table, and a stone cutter. And a good spot, in my opinion, for all of those guys would be this spot right here. Except, oh, hello there, didn't expect you there. In which case we are just going to move this guy over to, like, somewhere else. This now functions exactly as, as it used to except it now takes up a bit less space. So if it's at page 4, which it is right now, it shouldn't actually be doing this. Why is it doing this? Let us see. There we go. So now we have this spot right there, which could be used for all of those items that can be moved. There. It's kind of useless to be doing the same thing with Loom, given that the loom is already everywhere, like literally everywhere, but we're gonna do it anyway. So, here's our piston setup. We have this sticky piston right here, which pulls this back. Then here we have a normal piston. Then we have a normal piston here, here, and normal piston here. And then from this side, it looks a little something like this, which really isn't that bad at all. Like, I can live with that. So now we kind of have to 
fill it in with all those different blocks which can be moved. For example, the loom. Or for example, fletching table. Actually, they're going to be on the top here, or to be more precise here, and here. We then have the stone cutter. We also have the smithing table. We have the cartography table. And we have the, the bookshelf. And also bookshelf number two, I suppose. Or instead of that, a composter, which at first I didn't want to use, but now, well, since that's the only another block which can be used for crafting created stuff which can be moved we're just going to use that like yeah i don't really care anymore but now we will need all the redstone circuitry and for that we will need to first of all for example power this piston right here which can be done quite easily by doing that boom then we have this piston right there which nothing simpler we just need to hook it up like this and have another repeater like here for example i would say let's set those repeaters to two ticks and then or actually no this repeater here has to be set to two ticks and then this repeater right there has to be set to nothing at all okay and then this piston right here also has to be set to nothing at all. And with that in mind, we kind of already have the setup we need for a redstone feed tape. So let's count the redstone dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, blah, 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 blah. Right. And the way we power this thing is by using a circuit a little bit like this. So now if we do that, we should see that those guys get pushed over to there, those guys get pushed over to there, and then they all get pushed over like this. Which happens. Perfect. And now the only last thing we need to add here is powering this piston right there which can be done quite simply by just doing this here. Boom. So now if we go here, we can see we have a stone cutter right there. We also need to wire this up to that, which can be done, for example, by creating a pulse extender right about here. So if you just take some comparators like that, and put them here, here, and then there. We should see that pushing a button like here will attract this for a certain amount of time. Which actually is too much time for us. That's why we are going to do a different setup right here. We're going to do this, and then that, and then this, and then that. Now if we try this again, it gets retracted for way shorter than previously. So now we are able to wire this up to that, close this up and then wire this to a button, for example, here. We need more delay there. So if you now do the same thing, boom, functions perfectly. So if you now close this up like this and like that, we can see that we have a functioning system. If you press this button right there, the block here will get swapped for something else. And the functions perfectly. And we could even move this button over to here, so it's a bit closer. Perfect. And the next thing I thought we could add is kind of a security gate right here, which would only allow you to enter if you have your card with you. And so exiting would be quite simple. We just have a perforator right here. Which obviously isn't perfect because you can just stand here and wait for someone to enter. To actually have a function security checkpoint, you would need two of those guys. 
and then set up a little bit like this. But um, it doesn't really matter right now, it's only just to see if it will work for, for, for like what it's supposed to do, I guess. Okay, so now we would kind of need a card reader right about here, which I think we could create in this way right here. Looks a bit nice. Yeah, it, it looks quite okay, I guess. So what you do is you put your card in here. Uh, you know what, let's move it over to there. And then if the card is correct, the door will obviously open. And so what you also have to do is take like an anvil and the item you want your card to be and rename it to, for example, library membership. You will need a few of those, so you can just copy those and then you will need to go down here, which can actually be done like this. Okay, now here is our door. If the card is correct, we will want to dispense it on the other side, which can be done quite easily by just having a dropper there. If it's not correct, we want to dispense it on this side, which will be done in the exact same manner by dispensing it upwards, like this. Okay, now how do we confirm if a swing card is correct or not. Well, we are going to have a filter down here. So if you put a few cards like that, now if you put anything here and here that isn't the card, it will go in here. If you put something that is the card, it will go down here and not over there. So everything that isn't a card will already go here. We'll do the clock thingy in just a second. But for now, we will obviously also need to dispense the card back at the user. For which we are going to need to create a setup like this. There, there, and then also here. Boom. We now need a few of those cards in here. Like, and so, I believe 18. Hmm, something isn't correct. Oh, that's because this, I believe, needs to be like that. Correct? No, that's not why it doesn't work. In which case, I'm actually lost. I have no idea why it doesn't work. Let's see. Do we need to do this? Yes. This setup works. So now everything that's a card will go over to here. And in this case, we can just dispense it out here. So if you connect this up like that, and then do the clock thingy here and the clock thingy on this side. And by the clock thingy, I mean just a clock which will dispense the items that were just eaten just recently. So if we do this and then on the side, and then on the other side, this, this will dispense all the items which aren't a card. So if you put a spruce slab in here, it will get dispensed. And I believe it got picked up by a certain hopper, maybe? Or not. Well, either way, I'm going to cover those hoppers just to make sure that they don't actually pick up anything. And then I'm also going to do a clock on this side right here. So this will function in the exact same way, like this. And then we're going to have this setup here. So now everything that is a card should get dispensed on this side. So if we just cover the floor up like this and then put a key card in here, 
It didn't get dispensed. Why? Why not? Like it didn't get picked up. Does this not work? No, it doesn't. Oh, and that's because it was actually supposed to be like this. There we go. Now it's going to work 100% fine. So if you do that, whoop, we're going to have to change up this clock a little bit. But for now, what we can make sure of is that this setup should now work. So if we put a keycard in here, it still goes over to there. Why does it do this? Why? Do we have to put a keycard here? Yes, all right. It now doesn't do it anymore. So that's perfect. Now all the keycards should go here. So we have no keycards in there. If we put the keycard in here, we now have one keycard in here. And that's okay. I'm going to cover those guys up like that. But then again, yeah, we only need a single dropper right here. So if you just do the same setup as we did over there, we are going to be able to dispense all items very easily. Except we need to have blocks like this everywhere all the way to the very top. So now if we put a keycard in here, Perfect. We put one, two, three, four keycards in here. We get four keycards back. All right, and if we put something that isn't a keycard in here, we should get this item back as well. Which we do. Perfect. So now you have a system that sorts keycards and non-keycards. How do we open the door? Well, we will need to the door is here, let me just kind of mark the spot that the door is at, which is right here. Okay, it's a bit unfortunate because of this here. So I'm actually going to swap things around. I'm going to do this here and then this there. And the, this repeater is going to go here and like that. So now it should function in the exact same way, but now we have a way for our redstone torch to go to. So now this will open the door, obviously. This will close the door. And now what we want to do is add a pulse extender to this circuit right here. And we do that by just simply putting a repeater here, comparator here as well as here, and then redstone, redstone, redstone. So now when we put a keycard in here, the door will open for some time and then it will close again. So if we do this once more, bloop, and there we go, we can go through. So this is our keycard security system, I suppose. The next thing I kind of think we could add is an elevator somewhere here to get to the second floor. Now, where would we put this elevator? Hmm, that's an interesting question, you know? Let's actually put this here. This seems like a nice spot for an elevator. We can go up and then we can go out here. We will need to move this table somewhere else, but this shouldn't really be an issue. One thing an elevator obviously needs is a calling button, so we're going to have that. Next thing we need is a form of a door, which will close when the elevator isn't on the station and open when it is, which can just be done using simply um, blocks like this and blocks like that. Now the elevator would be here. The thing I kind of fear is that those blocks down there will, get, will actually get grabbed by this elevator. So a different way of creating this elevator would be to just put iron doors here. If you want the elevator to be as close as possible, we are going to need to replace those blocks with unmovable blocks, which I'm going to do really quickly. 
And actually, this version has introduced a few new unmovable blocks. For example, those bars, which don't look too bad. Do they? Not really. So if we were to have a few bars here, would it look absolutely terrible or is it actually okay? It doesn't really look bad. You know what? Yeah, let's go for bars. It will definitely look better than, for example, obsidian or droppers. So, bars like this. Perfect. This button will actually need to get moved over to there. Same for this side right here. And then we're going to have our doors like there. Perfect. We don't really need those bars here, however it will look uniform. So I'm going to do this. So now we have this kind of setup like this. Now we can read the, the button presses like this. And the next thing we need to do is obviously put the elevator in here. So the elevator can just simply be using those guys here. We then need slime blocks down here. We are going to need one piston facing up, one piston facing down, like here. Then we're going to need some slime blocks there. We are going to need an observer here. And also an observer somewhere else. Let me see really quickly. Also an observer... Hmm. There. I can't exactly promise that this setup right here is already going to work, but we can try it out. It works, perfect. So now if we just quickly make it stop, like this, we can think about how we want to create the entire mechanism right here. And so one thing to create this is to have a piston here, stop the entire flying mechanism. Now what's unfortunate is that our observers are on the wrong side, but we can fix this really simply by just doing a little bit of this. Let's see. We need an observer here attached to this. We then need to move this down. We cannot have any slime blocks here, but we can have slime blocks here. We can have a piston there. We can have a, an observer here. So now if we power this observer, it will go up. If we stop it with an unmovable block, I guess, we will need more pistons than just one to stop it. For example, three. Three pistons will work just fine. Right, you know what? We are going to have just three pistons right here. And then we're going to power them like that. And this should work perfectly fine. So we're going to do this. We're going to connect it up like that. We're going to do this. We're going to put this here. And boom. Let me fill in those walls with barrels, since this is the block we want to be using. It should stop right about here. Perfect. We can mark this as a very important spot for, for our elevator. Since this is what we will need to use in order to power this. Now, if we quickly make it go up again, we are going to be able to put some obsidian down here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four obsidian on this layer right here. This will make the elevator stop when it's going down. Now, how do we actually activate this elevator? Or how do we make it go down? Quite easy. We just need a pause extender right about here. And then we power this with the pause extender as well as this. So now if we quickly put a button here and do this, the elevator will go down. 
How do we make it go up? That's even simpler. We just need a piston. Let me see here. And then we need to power this piston. So if we do this, the elevator will go up. And so now we can wire this button to that. Now, but we also need to activate the elevator once we're actually inside. This can be done by putting a button, for example, here. It won't look perfect, but well, it will actually work. So that's the thing. So this button will also make it go up. And so this button basically equals like this. And then the next place we need redstone to go from is this button right there. And so this button, as already said, functions exactly the same as this button which we've just wired up. So we can do this. Now on the top floor, we are also going to need the same button for going down. So we can do this. We can put a button here. We can put some bars here. We can now wire this up to this pulse extender. There. Now the only thing that doesn't work yet is the doors opening. How do we do that? Well, we need to find a spot where we can power those doors. So for example, here and for this second door, where is it? It's, it's actually here. All right. In which case we can just do this. Oops, I destroyed some lanterns. It doesn't really matter. We can power those doors like that. Or even just using redstone. We could have the flank machine have a redstone block here. Which is going to activate those doors there. Which are here. Plop and plop. So we need to power this up like that. And we will also need to go over to the other side. If we now just make the elevator go up, we can see that those doors are closed, but the top ones aren't open. And so we're just going to quickly put a redstone dot right here. It's a very primitive method of, of doing this. Um, and then we're going to have a repeater here, already opened. We will also need the other door to open, so one, hmm, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We are in fact going to need a repeater here. And because of that, I'm going to put a repeater here so that the delay isn't actually noticeable. And so yeah, we now have this top door also functioning. So if you do that, the elevator will go up, the doors will open. If you go here, we press the button, we will go down the doors also close. But take some time for the doors to close. Why does that happen? Oh, I see. There. And so now our doors should function perfectly fine. So now if we repair what we have destroyed, which is quite a bit actually. Plop, plop, plop. And then on top, just a block here. We now have a functioning elevator. Boom, and then boom. Love it, absolutely love it. Boom. What else could we actually create here? Well, there was obviously this enchanting table idea. We can have just regular sticky pistons here, and then one other regular sticky piston there. So if we do this and that and that, and this and that and that, and then also put another one of those here. Those will take care of the single bookshelves. Those double piston centers will need to be in those spots right here, so that we can put those bookshelves here. 
and also here. And then if we go down here where the circuitry is, we will need to adjust it accordingly. So you basically need to put everything down by one block. So we need to do this. Put an observer here, put an observer there, and then put an unmovable block here. We could have a button there. What we can do is put a piston here with an observer and then have this observer, like this piston with this observer powered instead of the observer itself. So if we do this, then this should be enough for those side bookshelves. Perfect. And now for those other bookshelves, well, we only need to run a repeater in here, have a piston, a sticky piston with an observer here, and then a sticky piston with a block of redstone here. Quasi connectivity, which we can solve fairly easily by just doing this. Perfect. So this is our bookshelf setup completed. Boom. And bam. You know, the next thing I thought we could do is have like a little quick, I guess, transportation system. What do we do? We chunk this, and then using a water stream, we transport the player over to here. There. And then in here. Boom. This would be the perfect setup for us. We are just going to use slime blocks to push the player around. And this slime block is going to push us over a few blocks. This will push us over to there. We get pushed over to there. For this last bit, we can just have some water there. And now if we get pushed here, we get transported over by the water. The last thing we need to do is add a piston here, which this button will simply retract. And that's everything. We just need to stand here, press this button, and then do nothing for a, a tiny while. And we're here. And the very last thing I don't want to add is maybe like a tiny, I guess, book dispenser thingy. We are going to have this there. And then some rest on here. And then the dispenser is actually here. So this is where we want to um, go in the end. And then we want to do this. So now what this is, is kind of a book system thingy, which notifies you if there is a book in the system. The best novel ever. There once was a, an orange fox released in 1.14 and he was cute. The end. We can sign this in 1.14 or like the 1.14 box. So now to summarize everything we have. First we have this library membership keycard detection system which only lets you through if you have a keycard. It also drops the keycard back at you. If you put something in here which is in the keycard it will dispense it back at you. Now the next thing we have the second contraption is a swappable crafting table system, which has all those different kinds of crafting tables which can be pushed around. So we have those grindstones and smithing tables and cartography table, barrel and all those other stuff. And the second thing. Now the third thing we did is this kind of interesting system with five lecterns and you have to set all of those lecterns to the correct page for a secret entrance to open up. 
So we also have a rectangle here, page 13. We have a lectern here, page 14, and we have a lectern here, which needs to be set to page 8, which it already was, but I'm just going to set it to something else for now. If we set it to page 8, a secret entrance opens up right here with bread inside. So this is the third, I believe, yeah, the third construction we have here. The fourth one is this tiny bookshelf enchantment system right here, which is very cool and functions extremely nicely. Really like the fact that I made this using those slam blocks. Really like it. Anyway, so the fourth contraption we have in here. The fifth contraption we have in here is this tiny transportation system, which first drops you down into this dark, cheap underground. It pushes you around and then eventually you will just pop back out right here. You are there, you are now here. So that's the fifth contraption that we have in here. The sixth contraption that we have in here is this tiny elevator, which goes up, it obviously also goes down, and you can call the elevator from either floor, so if it's on the bottom floor, you can just call it using this button right there. So that's the sixth thing we have in here, I believe. And the seventh thing we have in here is this useless book thingy, which notifies you when you're out of books and then you will also be able to refill it with the same books. So that's the seventh thing we have in here, but yeah, this is actually everything for this library, I believe. I really love creating this video, I really love this library, and I am looking forward to seeing what you guys can come up with for this library. Maybe you can decorate it a bit better than I did, maybe we can add some more resume contraptions, for example, in this era, since we don't have anything in here. But yeah, the better version of this library with no redstone will be available for download in the description down below. Hope you liked this episode. If you did, please make sure you click that like button. It really makes sure that my channel gets the support it needs to grow. And it also ensures I get motivated to create more of those videos. If you're not subscribed yet, I would really recommend you do that. What did I break? I broke something. Doesn't matter. I would really recommend you subscribe if you want to see more content like this. But this was everything for today, I hope to see you later and see ya.